Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we're going to work on a real project because I put a poll out to see what people wanted me to do with an unstructured stream. And uh, very much in a surprise to me, nobody picked Fortnite. I thought that we were going to have a game stream. Um, and instead, we're going to work on a real project. So uh, I am actually... I mean, this is going to be fun because it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I find that one of the biggest barriers to getting work done on a team is the context switching required to collaborate, right? Especially when you get into asynchronous work, if you're looking at, you know what I did? Look, look back here. I forgot to turn on all my lights. Let's, let's, let's set the scene properly. I can't believe I did this. Um, give me just one second. That's much better. Okay, now let's play my favorite game, which is get my camera to recognize that my face is a face. Uh, you know, just confuse it into looking at, look at me. Come on, you, I'm the only face here. Why can't you suck? This is like the most confusing game in the world. There we go. Hey, look, I'm a person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love I love the autofocus on this thing because it lets me like move like this, which I couldn't do when I had it on a, a fixed focus. Um, but when it loses focus, I think my face is not a a human face according to the the autofocus thing. Uh, okay, so ambiance corrected. Uh, yes, Benjamin, that is indeed a Marissa face on the shelf. I'm not going to supply any context because it's a surprise for later. Um, not later this stream, like later when the thing that that exists for comes out. Um, but yeah, so let's let's talk about let's talk about why Chat Ops is the real project that I I chose to take on. So I have, um, we can say limited dev time. Uh, I think the the real. The real answer there is the only dev time I really get is if it's what I choose to do with my evening or this show. And so uh, why would I choose chat ops of all the things that I could work on? Um, I mean, part of that is is stemming from the fact that I am in leadership now. And so a lot of the work that I choose to do is around uh, kind of enabling and empowering the team. Um, and, and also, I mean, it's also just kind of fun to build bots, right? Like it's a, it's an opportunity to be playful. It's something that people are going to act with every day. And, um, and then maybe the most important reason, which is, I, I think it's really good for productivity. And, you know, one of the things that is really hard working async is you don't have chance encounters. You don't have, um, you don't have any of that sort of like built in safety net of a company where you can look around the room and see what somebody's working on. Or if you have a quick question, you can just say like, Hey, where should I, where should I put this? And somebody points at the board and you can go put it on that board. And instead you have to have processes, but process bloat is a really big problem. And in one of the biggest challenges I see is that everybody wants a process. And then the process that gets designed is so cumbersome that nobody actually follows it. And then everybody's frustrated because they're like, well, we need a process. Okay, we'll follow the process, but I don't want to follow that process. It's too hard. And then you end up in this weird zone of like, well, we can't use process because process sucks. Every time we have a process, it takes too long. It burns too much of my time. And so you you end up with these teams that basically function by, as far as I can tell, uh, just panic and, and sheer effort. Um, and that's not a good way to operate. So there are two pieces to this. One is, I think a lot of times processes get overwrought. You spend um, more time than you than you potentially should trying to, you know, put a million questions into your your process. And that's too many steps. People aren't going to follow them. And then the other piece of it is that I don't think processes, like if I have to stop what I'm doing and move to another app and then make more choices and then remember what I was working on before and come back to that app, 
it can be really challenging because that context switching cost is high. Even if it's something as quick as like, I need to capture an idea. And so finding ways to put, um, finding ways to put this information in the right place without having to switch context is really important. And I think that chat ops is a really good way to do this because a lot of times what happens is you'll be having a Slack conversation because we're all remote now and somebody will say something and you go, that's a really good idea. And somebody says, capture that. And you go, I don't want to open Notion or GitHub or Jira or whatever. And so the idea stays in the back of your head and never actually happens. Um, or you end up <laughs> like writing a post-it note and it sticks to your computer and, and you've got it there for like the next three years. Um, so I want to, I want to cut down on both the amount of process and the friction of following the process through chat ops. If you can run a slash command, it asks you three questions and you move on with your day. That's way less friction than saying like, okay, go to notion now fill out this eight step form. And if you don't fill this out, we're not going to follow it, which gives you a sense of hopelessness. And you know, just like you want things to be easier. So that's the project that I've been working on. I put a little bit of work onto it, uh, in, in my, you know, my evenings and the cracks in my day. And I want, I'm going to use the rest of this stream to, to kind of work on that. Um, but first a couple questions in the chat, Xander's asking what beans am I brewing these days? Uh, my favorite coffee shop in the, in the entire universe is Kova coffee. Um, and I absolutely love them. They are here in Portland. Um, and they've got like, I, whenever I go to the gym, I reward myself by walking across the street from my gym to the coffee shop, which did I choose my gym to put it close to the Kova coffee shop? Yes, I did. Um, and so I, I walk across the street and I get myself an oat milk latte because I yeah, apparently I've reached that age where milk is not working out for me. Um, and that's my like reward for being disciplined. I went to the gym, uh, but I also buy their beans to brew at home, um, do the, the Chemex pour over all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, actually, Xander, you taught me that or you showed me that video about like giving your beans a little spritz to reduce mess. And I think that absolutely changed my life. Um, Web Dever process has been giving me burnout. 100%. Yeah, I think uh, we the the blessing and curse of process is that it makes things predictable, but that can make things both very cumbersome and very boring. And so I think again, like shortening, 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 making it as, as, as low friction as possible to follow the process. Um, and, and that means that you can start doing things like, you know, the process is the way work gets done. It just, it's a habit you build, right? The same way that you open a pull request on GitHub to get work merged in. If you have a request for another team, having a, a really clear process to say, this is the request and it's, you know, low friction to do, you just build that habit and it starts to be something that just happens. I have an idea. I capture it like this, you know, and, and what I love is the idea of being able to do it like you would in, um, in Slack when you want to send a, like an animated GIF, you just do the slash Jiffy command and it just, it just works. Right. Um, and so what if it was a slash idea command and then it asked you about your idea and you, you send that off and you go about your business, trusting that it ended up in the right place. That's, that's sort of what I want to build is, uh, is, you know, that sort of thing. And I've made some progress on it. So why don't we shift over into a uh, desktop view? Good. Good, good. Um, and let me pull up here. Uh, before we start, we've got live captioning going. Um, we are with Maggie today from White Coat Captioning doing all of the live captioning. That is on the homepage of the site at learnwithjason.dev. And you can find our sponsors on the page as well. That's made possible by uh, Netlify, NX, New Relic, and coming soon, Pluralsight. So thank you to all the sponsors for making this show more accessible to more people. Very much appreciated. Um, we are going to be talking about Slack bots today, Slack chat, chat bots specifically, um, and I'm going to be hooking it into Notion. And so because I can't show Netlify stuff on stream, um, fortunately, the way that I was hacking on this is in my own personal Notion. So we're going to find out, uh, let's see, here's my test requests. So this is my my request inbox here, right? And this is what I want um, 
Like if when I'm working on a project, what I really want is to know who's in charge of it. Uh, how, how big is, I mean, we're, we're saying like, how big is the risk if we don't do this, but effectively, like, how do we know how to prioritize this? Is this a nice to have? Is this a must have? This is absolutely critical to our strategy. Um, or is it just kind of like, you know, it doesn't matter. Like if, if we have time, great, if we don't cool. Um, and I think that's, that's a, a big one. And then the other one is like, is it needed by a certain date? Um, and I think you have to attach a date date. Like I know that everybody hates deadlines, but here's what I found. No deadline means no urgency means no one will work on it. There's always something that has a deadline and you'll always pick the most urgent thing to work on. So if it's important, it needs to have some kind of deadline, not like a, we all get fired if we miss the deadline, but in order to like make this useful, it should be out within two weeks, four weeks, six weeks. Right. And then we can say like, all right, well, looking at all the things that need to be done in October, are we going to do this or are we going to deprioritize this? And then you can start to make these calls based on how urgent it is. And we need to know who submitted it and then what the status is. And so the way that, uh, that I've built this board in Notion is we've got an inbox. This is the stuff that people have requested. It needs triage. It doesn't have a driver. Um, and then we've got this project board, which is kind of broken down by people. And so I've only got myself, like, this is, this is my personal account. This is my Netlify account. Um, so I'm able to assign like different drivers to things, but I only have the two, but if on a full team, you know, it would be each person on the team. Um, and once you get assigned as the driver for the thing, it shows who did the thing. And uh, so we can do a little bit of, let's, let's break down how the notion works here. So first and foremost, I've got the, uh, the it's needed by, so the most urgent things come up first. Um, and then it looks like if it's overdue, it just drops to the bottom of the list, which is actually kind of awesome. No, 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 it's not. Uh, it's, it's just in ascend ascending order of date. So yeah, this isn't future. It's October now. And that means that, um, you kind of have ascending order of, of urgency. And then we also have where the driver is empty. I could also mark that like it needs to have, um, whether or not the status is needs triage. But what I kind of like about this is there two, there are two things like one thing is choosing who's going to drive it. And then there's the actual planning, like the triage to get it ready to work on. I don't think both of those things need to be true for a, a request to be processed. I think what we're looking for is like, is this idea something that we're actually going to tackle? And if the answer is yes, then we choose who's going to tackle it. That's the inbox processing. And then the driver can kind of work on the rest of it, the triage, the scoping and all that separately. And that, that gets it out of the triage stage, but we should know who needs to triage it. Right. So that's, that's my reasoning for only going by whether or not there's a driver and not necessarily, um, worrying about what status it's in for this view. Uh, and then the project board includes the needs triage so we can see where things are. Um, so this is, the, the request board. So the way that we would do this now is we would say, somebody would say, I have an idea. And we would say, Hey, can you go put that in notion? The person would have to come in here. They'd have to create a new one. And then they have to fill this stuff out. And here's what they would actually do. Do a thing. And then they leave it right. And, and that's just how people are wired. They, they don't, you just don't, you don't fill out all the fields, right? You look at this and you go, you know, like, well, I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure what we need to buy. And like, we'll figure out the risk later and, and they'll leave this part out. And, and it just, you know, the, there's like, just completion is not exactly an, it's not an urgent thing and it's not enforced in notion. So you end up with chaos. Um, and so for me, this is the part that, that is really, it's, it's not quite there. It's not what I want. So I want to improve this. And the way that I'm going to improve this is through a, uh, a Slack command. Please open in a different window. It did. Um, and then I have a test, like a test learn with Jason repo here or a, a Slack instance. Um, and so you can kind of see what's been happening here where I've got the bot, the bot shows what's open. This is actually the notion stuff. And we can see if we click on one of these, it pops it open so we can see what's there. Um, and then we've also got the, like a new request was created by the person who created it by. So let's start by just 
I guess digging into that. Let's um so here's my Slack bot. It is up on um on GitHub. So if anybody wants to check the code that I've already written, you can find that. Um <laughs> I am slacking off today, Chris. Thank you for noticing. Uh <laughs> but so here's the the code that I've written so far. Um and here is like let's let's look at this flow and why I'm excited about this. So what I'm doing here is I want to make a request. So we're gonna make a new request and it it's a slash command DXE request. And so I'm gonna say uh do a thing, right? This is what I was gonna write in Notion. And so now when I send this, it opens up this modal and I have to submit these things, right? So I have to say, I need it by next Friday. And okay, if you don't, if you leave it default, then it's a nice to have. So if I come in here, I go, yeah, we need this. People will notice if we don't have it. And then optionally, I can say, you know, additional details. So I'll say like, um, we talked about this in the content meeting and thought it would be good to support the upcoming X launch, right? So some kind of detail, why did, why is this in there and, and all that good stuff? Um, so then I submit and when I submit, it shows that a new DXE request was created by me. This is my user in the, in the, this test slack. And when I click through it now shows here's our thing. It's, we need to do a thing. It's needed by next Friday. Here's the status. It shows that I created it because it, it pulls the Slack user and the Notion user and, and uh, collates those. Uh, and then it includes these extra details in here. So this is kind of what I'm, what I'm excited about because it creates this really interesting opportunity for like this is lower effort than opening notion and finding the right database and, and all those things. Um, and so that to me is what that, like, that's why I want this. That's why I want this to exist. So that's what I want to keep working on today. So let's open up the code. Um, I have the repo here, so let's open it up. And there are a few things that I want to exist. So, uh, let's walk through how it works first since uh otherwise this is not going to make a ton of sense so um here's my slack bot what the heck is env paths i think i did this just to figure out what was here i don't know why i did that here's the actual command so um we are going to make this bigger so that it's easier to see and then We'll hide the sidebar here. So what I wanted to do was create a, um, a, it's a serverless function and the serverless function gets a body from Slack. So this is like when you actually run the DXE request, it's the, the Slack that comes in. Um, it gives us a trigger ID and then I'm going to grab the notion database, right? So that I can get the, the data. Um, and then we go through and grab all of the options out um, of the, the database. So this is pulled out of Slack. Um, and that is, so I'll show you how this actually works. So if I go into my Notion database and I decide that I'm going to update my properties and we'll say the, uh, how big is the risk? We wanna change this, we'll add a new property and we'll say, hi, um, see hi jason will yell if you don't right so we'll, we'll get that one added in and we'll put it in here make it orange right okay so here's our our cascading thing um and now when i go in here and i go to create a new dxe request it will now show that option so it's synced, like what's going on here is actually synced to the Notion database so that it's pulling the right information. I don't have to go edit the Slack command every time that, that we need to make an update on this, right? Um, and so that then means that we get our options um, and then we wanna go to the Slack API and open up a modal. 
the modal that we're opening has um, this uses the Slack blocks API for modal. So we're we've got a, a title, we've got the the callback ID is just um, something that we can kind of identify if we needed to do special stuff, we could identify it. If we had a bunch of these, we'd need to be able to identify which one it is. And then we've got the text for the submit button, and then we submit Slack blocks. So the first one is a um, just some markdown that says what to do, how to how to make the request. So let's open one of these up so we can look at the form as we go. So this is the the fill out this form. Um, it's got a, a link to you know if you want to go straight to the Notion thing. So right now I've got it linked to Google because this isn't the the live database. Um, and then you can you can tag me if something is going on. And let me just do the wrap here. Uh, this is the way that Notion does links. Is this sort of um, angle brackets link pipe and then the text and then here you can do uh, angle brackets around a username and it will it'll expand that to be a link or a thing for the user you can also use the user id which is probably the smarter thing to do because if i ever change my username it won't change my user id but it would break this because i would you know if i'm at jay langsdorf in in slack this is clearly not going to work um so then Let's see. Uh, reading the chat. Yes, you're right. What is that? Why did I do the thing I did? Um, so we've got this this section here, and then we've got the the title block, which is you know what do you need with some details. Um, so we've got a an input. We can put some example text in there. Um, we've got our like longer like the hint here. So the hint is this bit here. So we can see kind of what, what we're asking for, um, especially because as soon as you type here, your your placeholder goes away. So we the placeholder can be like, you could type something like this, um, but then, oh, it replaces your hint when you don't, ooh, I don't like that. Oh, it comes back though when you start typing. So you you get your, your hint there that kind of says what you're being asked to do. Um, you've got when you need it by, risk and additional details. So here's the date block. You just use a date picker element. Um, you've got a the label on it when you need this by. Uh, the importance block, all these IDs are, are arbitrary, but you do use them to select your, your information later. Um, so how big is the risk if we don't do it? And then we pass in these options. These are the ones that we, we pulled out of Slack up here or out of Notion up here, this bit. So that's our options. And we just default to the first one, which is um, low. But if we change, we actually, if we change the order of these, so I can change my default by going into Slack. And like, if I make this the top, then that would be my default. So by default, we want it to be low because, you know, that's generally speaking, if you're not bothered enough to even think about the, the importance of something, it's probably not that important. Um, and then we get a description, a description block. So this is plain text. Uh, we want it to be, does it give you a, yeah, multi-line true. And that's what makes it a text box instead of a, a text input. Um, then we're sending all of that through the, the Slack API here, right? And so I've just abstracted away the Slack API and the Notion API. So if we go in and look at these, the Slack API is a fetch request to Slack API. And then the endpoint is um, the one that we called back here. Let's open both of these so that we can still see what's going on. So the the endpoints, these are a little misleading when, at first because when you look at this, it doesn't look like an endpoint, but that's how Slack works is they, they do like a views.open. So I'm making a call to the Slack API views.open and then you pass in your options. So the options that we pass in uh, here includes your bearer token, um, and then you've got content type. You need to set a, a care set so that the Slack validation doesn't say like no care set. Uh, just kind of clogs up your um, clogs up your whole your whole stuff. And then you also want to set a body. And so if the body is uh, is not undefined, and the reason for this is that you can do get requests for like a user, at which point you wouldn't have a body. Um, so we, we default to get, if you pass in a body, then we're going to set the, the method to post and set the body to the body, um, run the request, get the response and then return that back. And that's what gives us 
this response from Slack here. Um, because it is not something that needs a response, it, it happens async, uh, we can just return nothing. And then you get a modal. So that's how we're actually getting this modal on screen here. Then when you do something with that modal, when we actually submit it, we need to grab those details. So uh, that's what happens in here. We are doing another serverless function. Um, we have the, the notion stuff where we need to get the, I wonder why I have all of these as separate things, whatever. Um, so we pull in the utilities from notion to uh, create a page in notion or create a database entry, I should say. Um, and then we also need the Slack API because we have to respond. So we first check to see if it has a payload. If it doesn't, we can just kind of error out. And then we grab out that body and get the payload itself, which is what comes from Slack. So the the payload is the, the value of that modal and, and the other pieces there. So the values are what actually comes out. That's like the, um, and this is where these, these names come in that I was showing you. So the values are what the responses to the modal were. They're in the, the view.state.values. Um, when we set here these um, block IDs, description block, importance block, etc. That's what we're going to use here is the importance block, description block to get those values. And, and that's why it's important to set it because otherwise they kind of auto gen one and the ID doesn't, it's not really human readable. Um, it is a little annoying that you have like the block and then the the, the field inside of the block, but yeah, it's a, it's a choice that they made. That's the abstraction. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's good. It's, it's fine. So this then gives us our actual data, title, date, description, importance. These are the four fields that we need from somebody in order to do this work. Um, we get our props. Uh, so what we're going to feed to, um, what we're going to feed to notion is this type here. Can I get in here? Um, we've got the name we've got submitted by needed by, and how big is the risk to Netlify? If we don't do this, this, <laughs> I know this is a silly field name. Um, and this is actually something I wish I could do in Notion where you could have like a label and an ID, but they don't do that. They use the label as the ID. So when you have a human, like a human readable text for your, your database properties, um, it's also the key, which is silly, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. Um, so this is going to be our request entry. We're going to build this out. Uh, and then we start with a title. There will always be a title. And then for the Slack user, I want to get the user ID out of the Slack payload. Who's the user in Slack that submitted the modal. And we then call the user's info endpoint. And because this one is a get, we pass in the arguments as a query string. So that gives us back their email, right? And then we have a notion util that'll get the user by email. And that gives us a, um, a notion user. And what I've decided for me, at least is if there's a notion user, then we're going to set it. What you could do is you could say, if there's not a notion user that matches the Slack user, they probably shouldn't be here. Right? So you can, you could fail or send back, you know, send an error, log something, send it to your security team, whatever. Um, I'm not going to worry about that just because I this isn't like a mission critical system. There's the only thing somebody could really do is, is post something into a database. So I'm not like, there's no mission critical stuff here. Um, and then we set the date, uh, if the date is set, which this always should be set, but I figured I would, I, it may be in the future, I'll make it optional. So I just did this check here. Um, and then the same with the importance, if they, if they check, uh, if they add importance, then we include it. Since I set a default, this will always be set. But, you know, again, better safe than sorry. Um, and then if they add a description, this is the piece that's going to be children of the page. Uh, and, and so the way that Notion works is they look at these as, uh, let me get one of these open here. These are properties. And this part down here is the children. These are child blocks of the, the page. Um, and then once we have the children, so we just kind of push in as a paragraph, the, the description there, um, we send in to the notion API, to the pages endpoint, 
we're going to send in which database we're updating, the properties that we set, and the children. Um, if there is not, a, if something goes wrong, we're going to log it, and otherwise we uh, we can then build out our request link. So we know that Notion.so is the the link. We have our database ID already. And then I want to get the response of the, the property. And then Notion does this really annoying thing where they add hyphens into the IDs, but they don't use them in the URLs. And they're not like, the, it, they're somehow not interoperable, which is like, cool, thanks Notion. Um, so you got to do a quick, this is a regular expression that will find all the hyphens and replace them with nothing so that you get a hyphenless ID. And then finally, this uh, PMS is the query string that they add for the sidebar peak. Um, so this this sidebar peak is is what we got here. If you change that, you can. Um, how does this work? It's like open pages in sidebar center peak. Then what you get is when you open it, it pops like this. Um, I don't. This is purely preference. You can do whatever you want. I I don't care. I have liked the side peak. Um, so I've kept it there. And when you do the side peak, you'll see over here that it adds the ID of the page. And then it's got this PMS that's for the side peak. If I take this off, oops, it will open in the, the center peak like that, right? So that's, that's how that works. Um, and then we have to build a Slack chat message. So I want to send a message back to Slack that says that somebody created a new issue. So I've got a channel ID. It's my, that's my testing channel. Um, leave this testing channel here is the one that I've decided to post everything to. Um, and let's see. <laughs> yeah, Tony, all, all error free. Um, so yeah, Graham, in terms of tests, if we operationalize this and anybody other than my team starts using this, we will hand it, we have an internal tools team and I'll work with them to figure out what the right testing is. Our testing right now is none. This is what I'm doing um, because I'm, I'm solving my own problem in a way that is not gonna be productionized. It'll be just used on my team. And none of what we're doing is really like mission critical. If our ability to put an idea in a Notion database goes down from Slack, it's it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like there probably should be some some tests. But check this out. So now I'm able to do a, a post message. We send it to that testing channel ID. You can grab that ID. Um, this is actually another thing that is kind of annoying about slack is they don't really teach you how to do this you just have to go in and know like right click on the channel name and then go to copy and then go to copy link and then you have to come over here and you have to do this and this is the channel id um if you don't know that good luck you just got to google it and there's a stack overflow answer that i found that'll show you how it's work how it works um so that is going to then get one block which is a section of markdown that says a request, a new DXE request, which gets the request link that we just built here, um, was created by the user ID, so whoever ran the slash command, and that gives us this message here. So that is the piece that um, gives us a, a kind of steady run of, of like a feedback loop. So I can be in here and I can be, you know, talking to, if I, right now I'm talking to myself, but if I was talking to somebody else, I could say, you know, DXE request, um, and, you know, a, an idea from our DMs. And I'm going to run it. It happens right here. Uh, we'll say I need it by tomorrow and no other details. And so I submit. And then the DX team, who would be in this channel, is going to get a notification that I just did that thing, even though it happened over here. Right. So that's, that's the other piece of this is there's a, there's an inbuilt Slack notification for when somebody uses the slash command. I don't have one for whenever a new thing is, is built in notion. That would, that'd be a nice to have, but I'd love it if everybody just used one flow. Um, and we'll have to see kind of over time, we can check to see if anybody is using it a different way and then, um, kind of addr address that. Um, yeah, Tony, that's...
Yes, the VP testing strategy is, I don't have time for this. Uh, if you care about tests, you write them. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, gotta laugh so you don't cry, right? Um, okay, so then there's another piece that I want, which is a standard, um, like a running on a schedule. So you can see here that today at 5 a.m., um, on Monday at 5 a.m., last Thursday at 5 a.m., there's a, a, a automated run that grabs this list of untriaged issues. That's another important piece is we need to know if somebody submitted a request and we're not responding to it, we've got to be accountable for that. If we want people to follow the process, the process needs to be something that we're accountable for following. So this, this public call out of these are the things that need to be addressed along with the date that it's needed by. So we can see like, holy crap, we just missed a deadline like that. That's bad. We should be paying attention there. Um, that is run by this scheduled function. So I've got a, uh, a Netlify function. We're using the, the schedule, which gives us cron jobs. And then I've got the, the Slack and Notion API pulled in. So for my Notion query, I want to uh, run a query for the needed, uh, let's see. Oh, no, okay, I know what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm running to get the ID, the name, and the needed by date from Notion. And then the... Um, the query itself, you go to databases and then your ID and query, that's the endpoint. Um, and so I'm going to filter for anything that doesn't have a driver and sort by the date and then pass in that, um, where's the actual issue? Databases, product query. How am I, oh, this is the type. Okay, that's what I, all right. I defined a type. I'm really bad at TypeScript and I'm still kind of figuring out how all this stuff works. So we get the, the result back as a Notion query so that then I can use it and each issue is typed. So I get autocomplete. That's why I did it that way. Um, so then we do the same thing. We build out a, a Notion request link. I probably could have made this into a util, but I didn't. Um, and then we get the, the name and the date out of the, the request. Um, this is what's nice is it gives you that autocomplete. And then we return a, a Slack block. So this is a section of Markdown with the, like a bulleted list kind of setup, right? And I could set that up in a bunch of ways so that it actually used a bulleted list the way that I've done it. It's not, it's just like plain text. I kind of don't care. So I'm, I'm happy with this, this is fine. Um, could have a lot more fun with it. We could do all sorts of things if we wanted to. I just don't, it's not important to me right now. Um, so then if the issues are greater than, if, if the issues are zero, I want to do nothing. So there's, you know, I don't need to post a, uh, like nothing to review. That's a, that's a waste of a notification. So if it's zero, we do nothing. But if there's more than one unreviewed, uh, item in the database, then we're going to do a quick check to see grammar because I, I couldn't handle the, there are, uh, the, there are one requests that always hurts my heart. So <laughs> did this check and then we go to post the message and, um, we add in the, the message itself. We spread the issues so that we get those blocks in there. And then some context that says, here's a link to the full open requests on notion. Um, and we just send that off. It's a scheduled function, which means it doesn't have a return body. You just send the status code. And I've set this up. Uh, this was fun cron jobs. These run on UTC, I think. And so UTC, how does that work? It's like UTC plus two or something. I don't know what server these run on. So I'm running it, um, at the first is it crap i'm going to have to put this into cron tab so we can we can break down how it works um let's go into crob cron tab is it guru yeah this is a good one so it's minute hour day month and day of the week Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so it's the, the first minute of the hour, the 12th hour of the day, but because of the time zones, I had to mess with it to get it in the right place day of the month. I don't care what day of the month it is. So it can be any day of the month. 
uh, which month, I don't care. It can be any day, but day of the week I care about. I want Monday, Thursday. So this one comma four, this was new to me. I'd never seen this before. Um, so I'm saying on Monday and Thursday. Also, this Crontab Guru is so dope if you've never used it before. Um, this is a uh, this is a really, really handy tool for figuring out what this is. Because look, <laughs> at midnight on Monday and, or I guess at, uh, at noon on Monday and Thursday. Um, so, oh wait, so if it's at 5 a.m., then that's plus seven, which would be GMT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's GMT. Um, GMT at noon. So noon minus seven puts it on Pacific time, which would be 5 a.m. So, okay, so they, they run at GMT. So this is uh this is a a thing that is that does make sense logically and I understand it. Uh <laughs> yes, the time hole. Um love it. All right. So now we've got a scheduled function and there's nothing else that I have to do to this, right? Like because I've run this uh wrapped it in this schedule and I pass in the the cron, um this function will now run every Monday and Tuesday at noon GMT. Um, that gives me the the ability to run this check automatically. I didn't have to build anything else. Um, and then the only other thing that's probably worth calling out before we just dive into more is that I built out some Notion utilities. Um, so the Notion client is... Uh, is an actual thing here. And the reason I needed this is because I wanted this collect paginated API because they they restrict your results to 100. I wasn't sure if over time this was going to end up being um, thousands of ideas or something. And so what I want is to just make sure that I get everything and I didn't want to have to write that all myself. So they've got this utility in the Notion client that lets you just query every single item in a database. Um, even if the you know if the page size is 100 it just goes to the next 100 and the next 100 until it runs out of results um so the get user by email we're getting all of the users in the in the workspace um we find the user that uh matches the email that we're checking for and then return that users that's how we can we can core uh we can connect a slack user to a notion user um then i've got some types in here for all of the different notion blocks and properties um, and the Notion API call, same general idea. We've got to send in a bearer token. Um, we've got to include these Notion specific things. Like you got to tell it which which version of the API you're using. You got to tell it that you accept JSON, and you got to tell it that you're sending JSON because it. I think it can work with other formats as well. Um, and then same general idea. It get by default. If you do send a body, we make it post. Um, send that off to the right endpoint, the api.notion.com. Um, and then for the properties, I wanted to have um, like how to get a title. And instead of having to write this whole block of, of uh, boilerplate around sending a title block, I just wanted to put in the title and have it be done. Same with the content. This is the boilerplate for making a, a property in Notion that is a, a rich text block, a date block, and a, a select. I just didn't, you know, I just didn't care. And then this is the, the for children, the blocks are slightly different. So you get a paragraph and it's going to return one of these. And the property is a rich text property. Um, so you're nesting this one inside of the the block so as you can see this gets pretty this gets pretty cumbersome to just be writing this code which is why i ended up having the um the handler here if you look at how i'm sending in the data which is in the interactive one um we build this out by doing like blocks.paragraph we do properties.select that's where i just kind of wrote these out to to shortcut for myself um get to the CSS already. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to write a single line of CSS this episode. And uh, I don't know, I, I, you're welcome or I'm sorry, depending on what your motivations were for today. Um, but so, okay, here's here's what I want to do next. Um, the, the next piece that I want to figure out is I also want a way, like if somebody just floats in there and, and it's like, hey, Jason, 
could you please do this thing um, for us? Uh, you know, we talked about it over lunch. You, you get these kind of tags where somebody will send you a message like this. And the, the hard part is that like, this is a lot of how async business happens is people just kind of ping and they say, Hey, do this thing, but there's no record of this. Like once, once we get far enough in the chat log, this message is lost and somebody will remember sending it, but like it didn't get put into anybody's backlog. There's no triage. There's no tracking of the thing. And so what we need is for this message to be added to the, the thing, but there's, it is really fun to have to kind of manage the emotional labor of being like, hi, uh, we have a database for this. Uh, and we need you to please, you know, put the, uh, put the request in this database. And then I have to go over here and I have to go find this database and I got to copy the thing. And then I like put it, Oh, that's the wrong thing. So I'm gonna grab here and then I'm gonna paste it in. Uh, could you please move the request there? And then I submit it and they respond back with, um, I don't have time. Could you please do it for me? And all these misspellings are there because they're responding on their phone. Um, and then either my team now has to say, okay, we'll break the process and we'll do this for you. Or now we got to take a stand and we say, you know, I'm sorry, we really need you to do this. And it now it's a fight, right? And so what I want is I want a robot that says, this is how requests get done and you can choose to deal with it or not, but like, it's not putting the emotional labor on the, the team to have to be the ones who are like the, the slack cops, right? And I think this is something that I think about a lot is, is when there's something that's really challenging, like pushing back on somebody, because the people who are going to be the most guilty of this are like me. I'm a VP. I'm in the middle of a meeting. Somebody has an idea. I'm like, that's a good idea. I throw it in Slack and asking a, somebody who is not a VP to tell a VP that we're not going to do the thing they asked for unless they put it into notion. It just doesn't happen. Right? So we need the robot to do it. Don't, don't make the team do that. Like power dynamics suck, but robots don't care about power dynamics. They'll tell you F off. So that's what I want to build next is I actually want to build a, um, I want to build a new Slack command that will, uh, that will handle the, the F offing. <laughs> so that's the piece that we got to figure out how to do next. And so I'm going to get into my, um, how are we doing on time? We got a little bit of time. So I'm going to try to get into customizing Slack, which is here. Manage apps, maybe. I think that's the one. I want to manage my apps. So I've built my LWJ bot. I'm going to open in the app directory. Configuration. Manage, maybe. Installed apps. Custom integrations. No, I need, there's a way to do this. I always screw it up. App management settings. No. Build maybe? That's not it. How do I get into my app? Here's my app. I want this one. Here's what I was looking for. Why didn't that just show up? Okay, so here's my my actual app. And I've got my basic functionality and all these pieces. And, and so the piece that I care about the most, um, is that gonna show a credential? Okay, it doesn't show any credentials that we care about. Let me pull this back over. Um, so it gives you your app credentials. You can, you can get a client secret if you gotta do secret stuff. Um, you've got your app level tokens and so on and so forth. You, you hackers, you, you dirty hackers. <laughs> um, and then if I was going to put this into the, the Slack app directory, I could customize all this stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, and you know, maybe I want to have like an app icon or, or something. Um, but so let's go into slash commands cause that's what I care about. And I've got this one here. So I want to create a new one and we'll call this um, like 
use the process or we'll, we'll call it we'll call it like process nudge um and then the request url is going to be wherever i put this but let me show you one of my favorite things that i just learned about uh, how to build Slack commands. So I want to test the dev live, but you need it to be a, a public URL for Slack to function. So I'm going to run Netlify dev live. And this is going to open up. So it pulls in all of my, my environment variables. Um, yeah, that's fine. And then it gives me this temporary, like this is a, uh, auto gen but it gives me my URL that I can use. So I can put this in here and then I can go Netlify functions and we'll call this one um, nudge, right? So now uh, let's see, remind someone to submit via Notion um, and the usage hint is there isn't one. We It's just gonna be a, a straight up, right? So you're gonna run this as process nudge. So. I gotta remember that I called that nudge. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna create a new function. That function is gonna be called nudge.ts. And I'm gonna go back into command to remember what it is that I'm actually responsible for here. But let's um, start with the stuff that I definitely need. So I've got my handler and then I need to export the handler. We'll say that if it doesn't, does it need a body? probably doesn't need a body. So I'm going to do one of these and we'll put this down here. And then I want to, um, do we need anything special here? We, I don't think we do. I just want to send a message. So I'm going to skip all of this head down here and we're going to drop this in. And then now I think if I run this, it won't fail. So we should see it immediately. And if I start typing nudge, it says process nudge. I run it. Nothing happens, no error, but that's expected because we didn't tell it to do anything. So what I want to do next is I want to send a message. So I'm going to come back down to my Slack post message, right? And so I can grab this and go into my nudge. Let's put this in here. And so I need to um, actually send this. So let's go back here and grab Slack API out of my utils. Okay. So now I've got this I'm not really going to use the event so I can leave that out to avoid that whole deal. And then this piece here just be, listen, Dave, we talked about this. You have to submit ideas through the process. Run the D oops. DXE request command in Slack to submit this idea. All right, so now if that does what I think it does, and we'll see how, how well I've abstracted everything here, then immediately upon saving this, because I have the the live tunnel open, I can do a nudge and the bot re response, right? So this is, this is where it gets really powerful because now when somebody comes in and they try to circumvent the process, you just, cool, yeah, no. Uh, does this work in, in threads? Because this would be dope. Let's try. No. So we'll have to figure out how to... Can I make this work in um, replies in threads? I bet there's a permission that I need to add. So let's go OAuth and permissions. And hope that didn't show the whole thing. And then let's see if there is a OAuth scope for threads. Message, chat, write, customize. Hmm. How does one run a slash command in a thread? Channels read, channel manage, history, conversations? 
That seems like a thing that already exists. Incoming webhooks, links, pins, reactions, reminders, remote, team, groups. Okay, to the Google. Um, slack, slash, command, in thread. Use slash commands. How about we go to Stack Overflow? That's always faster. Um, yeah, not supported in threads. It's not possible to add. And that's from 21. Oh no. Slash commands cannot be used in messages. Boo. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay. Um, Slack shortcuts. Can I get a shortcut? Uh, let's see, commands, interactivity and shortcuts. Are threads a Slack thing? Yes, threads are a Slack thing. So um, what I'm looking at here is like, you can you can reply to thread and that opens up the sidebar here so that what i'd like to do is be able to put this reply in here so that it's kind of contained um but i wonder I bet I can make this into a shortcut. Let's find out. So interactivity and shortcuts. I want a new shortcut. Global on messages. Okay. So that feels like a thing that I want. So I'm going to hit next. Callback ID. All right. So let's go with... Um, Just give it a, like a DXE process nudge. And then we'll say um, reminds people to submit ideas to the notion uh, using the proper channels. And then the callback ID will be like nudge shortcut. How about that? So we create it. We go in here. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, but what? What? Update. Any interactions with shortcuts, modals, or interactive components will be sent to a URL you specify. So they're all going to go here. Oh, no. So that means I need to... I need to make a little utility here to send this part well no i don't i can just go in here and i can do something like um let's do a console.log of the event and let's also update this one to be our live command for a minute while we're working and I have to remember to go fix that after the fact so that it doesn't break on us. But for now, because I've created this nudge, when I come in here, oops, and I say, let's do this, and we'll say, uh, wait, why isn't that working? Add a message shortcut. Here we go, process nudge bot. So I run that and it fails, but it does send us all of this data. So this is what uh, this is what came back and it's gonna give us the headers, it gives us a payload and it gives us a message action with some tokens and stuff. And then the other piece that we need is um, if it gave us the type which I'm sure it's in here somewhere. If we call back ID nudge shortcut. So we need to we need to find this nudge shortcut 
and then we can do some stuff here, right? Um, oh, did I screw up the the link? Apparently it can dedupe that, but yes, that was good catch, Linda. Thank you. Um, oh, we got some we got some subs, we got some raids. What up, y'all? Uh, thank you, Michelangelo, for the sub. Thank you, Sleepy Paul, for the sub. And thank you, Alex, for the raid. What up, Trost Friends, Front End Horsies? Um, what do you all call yourselves? Uh, the what's the what's the crew? Like the the front end or the draw the rest of the horse, the um What is it? What do you call it? Feels like that needs a name. Um <laughs> Did, Nikki, that uh, that cheesy old Batman stinger. I used to have one of those where the the Learn with Jason logo would spin, and I I got away from it because I was worried it was too like flashy, distracting. Um, plus, I learned how to do this this really cool After Effects thing. Um, I actually made that like color wash thing, and it makes me really happy. So that's the, the the first and only thing I've ever built in Adobe After Effects. So then I need to use this payload. And the payload is the piece that I need. So why don't we actually put this down here? And then we'll use the payload instead of the event. And that'll give us more data. So let's try again. This is going to fail again, but it lets us get more data so off we go here is our wait I decoded it this time oh, it broke early hold on undefined reading state okay so that's gonna break here okay so we gotta we gotta check what uh what callback we're getting before we do that piece so let's um let's log again and because it's not a modal it doesn't have the the state so good all right but it does give us a callback id so we're gonna say um if payload dot callback id equals oops um nudge shortcut then we actually want to do something different so let's um how do we want to do this let's do let's do this we'll just return again um so we'll just shortcut this whole thing i probably want to abstract this out a bit so that it doesn't turn into a big nightmare code um but to start let's just make it work so i'm gonna Put this up here so that we've got some debugging in place. And now this shouldn't fail. It should just do nothing. So I'm going to uh, run the nudge, come back here. And yeah, here's our response with status 200. Good. Um, and it gave us nothing, right? So that is awesome. And ooh, look at this. Look at this. It shows us what the message is. <gasps> Ooh, that means we can do some shit. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna grab the message user, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gonna be great. All right, so I'm gonna get the user uh, ID, which is gonna be the payload message user. Is that right? Payload me payload message user. Okay, and now we can make a message, and the message is gonna be, hey, at user ID we've talked about this all right and then we're gonna send that dang message so let's get the nudge and I want to do this piece all right so here we go again but we're gonna change out this bit for this bit so now, if it works, it should actually tag the person who sent the message.
Okay, so that's closer, but it didn't get in the thread. So now we got to figure out how to reply to a thread, um, which I can figure out. We can do that. We can do that. Um, Nikki thought about a name, but they decided against it because of too many nay votes. Boo. All right. So now we've got a response, but it needs to be in the thread. So let's go figure out how to, um, let's see, Slack reply in thread. Use threads. API conversation replies cursor paginated thread of messages posted to a conversation. I don't, I don't care about that so much. Maybe we can just figure out if there's a thread that it owns token channel attachments, thread timestamp, post another messages timestamp value to make this message a reply. Avoid using a replies timestamp value. Use its parent instead. Okay, so let's go back to the output here. Reply. Is there... A, so this is the timestamp. Latest reply. Reply users. Last read. Okay, so what happens if I... Does it show it on stuff in here? Like, can I nudge? Yes. Okay, so does that one give you like a thread timestamp and then a timestamp. So this is the one that I want. So so we'll start by looking for a Okay, so we'll start by looking for a uh, a thread timestamp so we can say um, if payload dot message dot thread Thread TS, actually we can just, we can simplify this. We'll go TS equals or payload.message.ts, right? So use the thread, the thread timestamp. If there is no thread timestamp, use the message timestamp and that should line up. So here's our thread TS, here's the regular TS. This one did not have a message and it only has a TS. That's all good. Oh, it does have a thread TS. Oh, so you can just use the thread TS no matter what. Hmm, that's good. So don't really need this part, actually. We can just simplify. So then we get a thread timestamp. And we pass this in looking at... Attachments blocks text, so I can just put in thread TS here. Okay, so that should make this into a reply. And then when we come over here, yeah, that's it doing its thing. And so now I can nudge. Boom! Look at that. Okay, now let's do... Um, Someone annoying who is definitely not me having way too many ideas. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm off in la la land. You got to remind me. Oh, but that didn't work. Interesting. Okay. What happened out here? So this one, this one didn't have a TS. So we do, okay, so we do need that fallback to thread TS. So let's go back. Payload message TS. Okay, try it again. And there's our reply. Dismount. Um, okay, so th this is great. I, I think this is... Um, this is exactly what we need. So let's make this more useful and we can do something like, let's see, the message should be like, um, something a little less mean, right? So, um, in order to make sure we don't lose track of any 
requests, we ask that everyone um, use the DXE request Slack command to submit ideas. If you prefer, you can also use You can also submit directly to, uh, we need the link. So we would go out here and grab this test request database and say, I don't need this part. I don't think, I think we can just link. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So we can link directly to here and say, um, Submit directly to our requests notion database. Um, let's try that. So go out here. Um, another request. And nudge. Ta-da. But you know what? I actually kind of want to de-emphasize this. So let's use the Slack context thing, which I have down here, I think. Where is it? Oh no, that's in the the, the cron job. So here's a divider and then a context. So I can just grab that, come back over here, and we'll say, up in here, we can put in our divider, and then we can take our message. And move that bit down here. Oh, but that's, this is a better idea. So let's do that. We'll do a uh, process.m.notion, notion db id. Okay. And let's try this one more time. So I'm going to nudge. And look, now we've got the actual message along with helpful details if you want to do more. Um, this is pretty excellent. Uh, if you click on the little button in the thread, it does what happens. Ooh, it gets the thread. Oh, okay, so this is cool. All right, so like some while, uh, some valid piece of information, but this is not a request. Now somebody else comes in and says, you know, oh, it would be cool if this was, you know, X. If, yeah, like if we added X to the site. Um, so this is the one that we want to nudge. And so we come in here and we nudge and it would get this person's at. I wish I had two Slack users at the same time to kind of show how this works. But that's that's great. That's actually exactly what we want. Um, cause yeah, if we, if we nudge here, it nudges the bot. Um, that's awesome. So this is, this is really helpful stuff where we can do all those things. And then if you try to run DXC request, is it going to not support it in thread? So it gives you a little bit of feedback. You'd come out here, you'd run DXC request and you would get the form. Okay. So that's a little bit of chat ops. Um, and I think the next piece that we want to do here, we got about 15 minutes left. Um, let's <laughs> invite us to the Slack. Uh, no, not going to do that. <laughs> uh, because I'm also going to start working this into the, the live Notion database for, for Netlify. And that's a whole security thing that I can't do. So um, I'm going to keep this one closed down. But... I can get this live. So to get this live, I'm going to um, save. We can get add. You know what? I'm actually going to remove the, I'm going to remove the slash command. 
for nudge because I it doesn't do what I want. So let's go to, don't need that one. Let's go to the slash commands. Let's delete the nudge. Yes, delete it. And then we've got our in, interactivity and shortcuts. We've got our shortcut, that's our process nudge. And now we need to get this actually live. So let's save. I'm can, I can delete this notch then, because we're not going to use it. Okay. Add a shortcut to nudge about process. And then we can do the push. And with that going live, um, I can get into the project here. And we'll see that deploying. It shouldn't take very long, but then I'm going to get this live app. And we can go in here and update this again and save it. And once this finishes, we'll be able to go and give it another test, make sure it does what I want. Uh, Linda, that's a great idea. Uh, you could use this slash command to like build out your one-on-one -on -one stuff. Like th this is the idea, right? Is like whenever you have an idea, you want to, you don't want to lose that idea. That's the whole point. But if every time you have an idea, you have to stop what you're doing, move to a different app, capture the thing, and then remember where you were in the other thing. That's not great. Um, okay. So it's, it's deployed. Uh, this one, I don't need this one anymore. So let's look here. And nothing up my sleeve. Let's do another idea. I'm going to run this nudge. And there it is from the live site. And it links through to the Notion database if you want to do that. All good. Okay, so this is getting closer. This is, uh, this is now starting to feel like something that we could really work with. Um, what do you think, chat? What do you feel? What, what, what else would you use this for? Are you actually, here's a question. I had never really thought about chat ops all that much when I, um, like when I first started at, at Netlify, it wasn't something I was really, it wasn't on my agenda or on my, on my mind. And then as I talked to other people, like we had, um, somebody who used to work at Netlify, uh, Gerald, he went over and worked at GitHub and I was asking him, you know, what's really different between, you know, working at, at. Netlify versus working at GitHub. And he said, chat ops, like there's so much automation run through our chat that, you know, I'd never considered. And so that kind of got me thinking like, oh, that's a, that's a really good point because a lot of the most valuable things that we do, um, we're all remote now. And almost all of us are in one chat program or another, whether it's Slack, Discord, et cetera, et cetera. Each of these is a, um, it's an avenue that we're we spend most of our day in because that's where we get our contacts. It's where we share ideas. It's where we ask for help. And so we're spending a lot of time there. So if we can make that a hub for a lot of the places that we're working, a lot of the things that we're learning, um, and we can, you know, very easily get ideas out of Slack and into the more permanent places that it should be, then we lose that. We or we mitigate, I should say, some of the challenge of Slack is where everything happens, but it is impossible to find things in Slack. Like if it's if it's not a day old or newer, you, it's just so hard to find. Like oh yeah, we had that conversation, that decision got made over here, etc. Um, having a slash decision chat command where you can just say okay, we've made this call slash decision at user at user at user agree that this is what we're going to do, and that goes into a decision log on the project. Like what an incredible way to solve that problem, right? Like I, and, and now I want to go build that one. Actually, that's a huge, that'd be huge. Um, could be, could be just incredible, right? Um, so with that being said, y'all, we did a real project today. We worked on, um, we worked on some, some chat ops, got ourselves some, uh, some working chat commands. Um, if y'all want to play with this, I actually did take the time to write down like, what are the tokens that you need? And, and you know, how do you get this thing up and running? Um, I think I managed 
to get all of this in. Interactivity and shortcuts. Did I get all the... All right, so the piece that I'm missing, I think, is the permissions that are required. So when you run this, you'll have to go add permissions to your bot until it can do all the things that it needs to do. Um, but, you know, that's that's pretty... Actually, that's a good thing that, that Slack does with their uh, bots as they run the, the error thing. But yeah, don't sleep on this live command because it lets you test like webhooks and um, chat commands and other things that otherwise you'd have to deploy, wait for the change to go live. Test, make your changes, deploy, wait for it to go live, test, right? This really short circuits that loop because you can just save it, run it again, save it, run it again. And then when it works, you go and deploy it. That I think um, that's probably the reason why I was able to get this done is, is being able to test like this with the, the dot live URL. Um, but yeah, get in, get in here, play with this, make some, make some stuff. And then I also, I've been playing with some, some discord commands because I, I have a learn with Jason discord. I don't actually like, it's not private or anything, but I don't invite anybody to it because I still haven't quite figured out like what I want it to be, but I've started playing with some ideas for discord slash commands as well for capturing like guest ideas or capturing a, you know, a thing that we want to publish or a clip or something. Um, so lots and lots of, uh, lots and lots of ideas for what could be possible. Um, yeah, Dom does some really cool discord stuff. Uh, he's been working with the, the discord API around events and, and things like that. Let's do a little shout out to Dom. Um, Demetrius Clark, where are you at buddy? There he is. Everybody go follow Dom. Dom is uh, Dom is good people. Also, does anybody know why the heck Twitter won't let me get out of mobile Twitter? Like, did they just make a decision that all of, of Twitter.com is is mobile Twitter now? Or is that happening to other people? Or did I mess up a setting? Um, no idea what's going on there. Super weird. Anyways, I think we're going to call this episode a success, y'all. So I am going to, uh, I'm going to just do one more quick round of shout outs. We've had Maggie here with us all day today from White Coat Captioning, doing the live captioning. That's on the homepage of the site at learnwithjason.dev. Um, that's made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, NX, New Relic, and Pluralsight all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people, which I really, really do truly appreciate. Um, while you're checking out things on the site, please consider uh, following on Twitch. I know that it, it makes a big difference to me if uh, to have those followers because that helps people discover the show on Twitch. Um, if you want to subscribe on YouTube, again, it's, it, you know, like the videos, share the videos, do the subscription stuff. It's all little things that make a big difference in terms of discoverability and whether or not YouTube recommends stuff, whether or not Twitch recommends stuff. So um, please, please do the, the like and subscribe dance. I, I appreciate it very much. Um, and check out the schedule. You can add the show on Google Calendar if you just want to get a heads up. But uh, Ryan Florence and team just released React Router 6.4 pretty recently, like uh, within the last few weeks. And... It does all sorts of cool stuff that is relevant to um, some of the big things that were exciting about Remix are now built into React Router 6.4. Very platform focused, um, lots of new stuff. So we're going to learn a lot. So uh, Ryan's going to come on, teach us all about it. Uh, we've got an episode with Joyce. We're going to learn about um, FIDO2. So like how to log into a website with the fingerprint scanner on your, your computer or the face ID on your phone. Um, really, really cool stuff there. Uh, we've got like payload CMS and Next.js, so design systems for enterprise sites. This is kind of the holy grail. Everybody wants this. Most people get it wrong. So finding any way that any patterns that work are going to be great. Um, we're going to do component tests for web apps in Cypress. Uh, I just talked to Shande Person, and Shande's coming back on the show. If you haven't seen Shande, she is absolutely stellar. Um, so we're going to learn. I got to get this one actually up on the show. But wait, what have I done? Shande. There, 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 there's Shande. Um, so this was a great episode. We're doing another one soon. And make sure you, uh, like I said, just like, subscribe, follow on Twitter, do the do all the things because it, you know, it makes me feel good and also helps other people find the show, which is very useful. With that, y'all, we're going to call this one a success. Who should we go and raid? I uh, Let's see who's live. I'm seeing... The Primogen web page test, Martin Dowden. Um, any anybody else that y'all are seeing that you want to go raid? I 
I'm just gonna pop over to the the Twitch browse. And let's see who's live. Because I'm always trying to find new channels too. I think that's really fun. So let's get into live channels. Um, can I directory all? I don't mm, is this how you get into software and game development? Good. Live channels. All right, who's up? So here's Primogen. Um Jamie Pine. Finite Singularity. Who else? Lana Lux is up. Oh yeah, uh, Game Dev. Um, music synced 3D action game. That's kind of that's dope. Uh, let's see who else is up here. Daniel Hart, Linux Home Lab, Block Monsters, uh, Next JS, Jelly Car. What's everybody doing? Node JS. Oh, that's Spanish. Path to Light. I'm not hearing any opinions from the chat which is shocking to me. Um, I think Music Sync 3D action is pretty dope. Is Jesslyn live? Yes. Okay. Let's go raid Jesslyn. Um, all right, let's, let's do it. Why am I not following? Don't email me though. Um, <laughs> Okay, let's go raid. Let's go raid Jesslyn, uh, and we will see you all next time. Thanks as always for hanging out, Chad. This has been a blast.